All right, we are testing five food gadgets from Amazon. Our first gadget, or food tool, or whatever you want to call it, is going to be this butter knife. I don't even remember the name of this thing, to be honest with you. Simple spreading, maybe? Maybe they're saying that's what it does? It's supposed to be like a, just a better, better, more improved butter knife. Oh, it says, the magic butter knife. Curl your butter with ease, straight from the fridge, no more t bread tearing. So it's got like these, like notches on the back, and you're supposed to be able to somehow use these notches to curl the butter, like onto the blade and then be able to spread it or something. So I got a stick of butter here, straight from the fridge. So now you're supposed to take this special butter knife and just like, Um, okay, I mean, I, oh, maybe you're supposed to do it like this, maybe? That does not seem to be working. I mean, I see kind of like what it's trying to do. Like, it's not any easier than just like, if you just took a regular butter knife, I feel like you could just... Yeah, you could just scoop up butter like that. If, in fact, if you use it like a regular butter knife, it scoops up the butter better than if you were to try to use it like this and try to get it to like spread through these little holes or whatever. It like just collects on the backside even more. So like how how is this more useful? Maybe like maybe you need to do it like on a piece of toast or something? Like maybe there's I don't know, something I'm missing. I did bring my fancy toaster out to the garage. Let's throw in two pieces of bread, make some nice toast. Now we have two pieces of toast. Now, maybe the, maybe the toast is gonna like unlock the magic or something. First, let's go with just a classic butter knife. Scrape up some butter. Let's just spread it on the toast. Not, not, not the best experience. The butter where it's out of the fridge is still so hard. It just doesn't really, really spread that well. Okay, so that's kind of exactly how, what I expected. Now let's try this. Okay. And then I'm assuming, I'm assuming you're supposed to scoop it up one way and then spread it on this side. Really. It literally just collects more butter on the opposite side than it does through the holes. And the whole purpose of this thing is supposed to be to make spreading to take to make it easier to spread butter straight from the fridge to your toast or whatever. But look, it literally collected probably twice as much butter on the back side as it did on the side with the holes. And then like to top it off, like it doesn't even it doesn't even spread any better on the side with the holes. This doesn't, this doesn't even make any sense. I mean, I don't know what else to do with this. I mean, this was the, the entire purpose of this device. I, I'm gonna set this off to the side and we'll let the butter type of kind of soften up and see if maybe like that makes a difference, even though that's completely not even what it's intended for. Um, but I guess we'll see. All right, our next product is called the Butter Mill. This is a device that is supposed to dispensing butter Easier, I guess. Pretty straightforward. Comes apart like this. It's literally just like a square. You stick your butter in there. And then this, this part right here screws out. And then as you need more butter, you just kind of screw this thing in and it's supposed to dispense the butter. So it should be just as simple as getting a stick of butter. Drop it in there. And we screw this thing on here this cap on the end. Now it has, I don't know how well you can see it, but it's got uh, readings on the side that tell you um, like one tablespoon, two tablespoons, three tablespoons and whatnot. So you can see how much butter you're dispensing. So if you were like adding butter to like a recipe and it called for, I don't could do any cooking. So whatever it calls for, one tablespoon of butter or whatever. So we should just be able to turn this thing. <laughs> uh, oh. 
there we go. Wow, this thing really, I mean, you, you really gotta crank this thing. Cause this butter, like I said, straight out of the fridge, like it's still coming out. I mean, the, it does dispense the butter. Say if I needed like a half a tablespoon of butter right now. It's, it's, like, it's like you have to put the pressure on it and then you have to wait for it to squeeze out. Now, I know that this would probably, is probably gonna work better if the butter is softened, but that kind of defeats the purpose of it. Like the whole purpose of this is that you can dispense the butter right out of the fridge so that you don't have to pull it out and soften it. I don't, so far I don't really like this thing. I want this thing to perform good. This butter is literally just out of the fridge. It's only been out of the fridge maybe like five, 10 minutes at most. Let's uh, let the butter sit for maybe like another 10 minutes or something. You really gotta crank on this thing and torque it down pretty good to get this butter to come out. So let's let it kind of chill for a minute and see what happens. All right, well, while that butter softens up, I guess we'll do this next one that I'm gonna have so much fun with. This is Rub Away. This is a stainless steel bar of soap that is supposed to remove cooking odors. It's literally just a bar of soap that is just made of literally just stainless steel. It says quickly removes pesky cooking odors from your hands. Rub the stainless steel bar as you would a bar of soap to easily remove odors such as garlic, onions, and fish. So, I don't have any fish, but I do have garlic and onion. Get some cooking odors on my hands. I don't know why I have this. I don't need a knife this big. I'll just use my small one. Jeez. Yeah. I, I hate onions. I'm sure you guys already know that. There is plenty of stink in that onion. I like garlic, but why does it smell so bad whenever it's in a jar? <laughs> it, it almost smells like it's bad or something. It smells like wet dog. It's, it's as weird as that sounds. That's almost exactly what it smells like. All right, so. I hate this. I got my onion juice. I should just use this as like cologne. That'll attract all the ladies. Oh, let's get a little bit of this garlic. Let's dry this off. I think it's fair. I think it's pretty fair to say that my hands have been that they stink now. I think we can move on to the next step, which is hopefully removing the stink. An onion smell usually go, it'll stay on your hands for like days. So I have a little, just a little bowl here of warm water. Oh, I just touched my face. Now it says to just like use this as you would a bar of soap. So. I guess I'm just supposed to dip my hands in here and then just rub them on here. Just like you would a bar of soap. Wash my armpits maybe. This feels so weird because it's like, it's like you're washing your hands but there's no, there's no soap. I can already tell you I don't think this works. I can still smell it. I mean, no. I, I would say that did nothing. It's not as, it's not quite as intense as it was but also my hands got wet. So I I don't think that it did much more than just like water by itself would do. I guess this means I have to do it again without the bar and I'll just get them wet and see what happens. So great, more, more onion juice. All right, now let's just see, just, just water alone. It's, it's literally the exact same. The exact same effect. Like, what is this even supposed to do? Legitimately, exactly the same. I can tell no difference between using the bar and not using the bar. All right, I'll do it a third time. If anything, I think just using regular soap would probably be better because just just using water gets the scent gets the smell off like probably 90%, 80% maybe. So if you just use soap, you're going to have the added uh, scent of the soap. So it's going to cover it up. But just to confirm my theory, I'll do it again. All right, I know you guys love this. <sighs> this is literally one of the, one of the worst smells in the world. Hmm. <clears throat> 
Gets me every time. Very, very strong smell. I'm just gonna use a little bit of Dawn. Just a little bit. That's enough. Let's see how much of a difference that makes. Scrub all that smell away. Now, let's see. Yeah. I don't smell anything. Maybe a little bit of something, like maybe it's like 99% gone. Just the water by itself got rid of the smell like 80 or 90%. And I mean, it was the same with the, with the rub away. This thing doesn't even work. You get the same, the same effect with this as you would if you just got your hands wet or if you just use a little bit of soap and just wash your hands like normal. Who would have thought that that would work? How this is supposed to work? Like, I don't know the science behind this thing, but it does nothing. All right, so it's been about eh, 25, 30 minutes, give or take, since we tested two, both of these butter products. Give our special butter knife a try again. Okay, it seems to be kind of going through the holes a lot easier, but I still don't see that being any easier than just using a regular butter knife and scooping it up. Let's do like three scrapes. Okay, so that's how much butter you get for that one. And that's how much butter you get for this one. <laughs> a third the butter on the, it's like a third the butter on the side that it's supposed to be on. And then other than that, it just works like a regular butter knife. I think this thing is stupid. I think I've I think I've proven it that, that like this design and all this it serves no purpose really. It's just kind of for looks. It doesn't really give you an advantage on anything. Now let's see how our butter mill is doing. Ah, huh, okay. Oh yeah, look at that. You can squeeze it out quite a bit easier. Huh, I'm I'm so torn between this. Does it work? Yeah, it works. It you can put the butter in there, you twist the thing the butter comes out. That's what it's supposed to do. In order to make it do that, I had to let it sit out for like 25, 30 minutes for the butter to soften up, for it to actually like be useful in the device. Kind of takes away from the purpose of the device if every time I want to use this thing, or if every time I need butter and I'm gonna use this thing, if I have to set it outside of the fridge for 25 minutes and then I can crank it out and get my butter off of it. Why would I not just pull the butter out of the fridge, cut it, and throw it in whatever I'm cooking? You just have to like wait for the butter to soften, which I don't like, and I think kind of defeats the entire purpose. I'm not really a fan. It does do what it says it does, so I just have to get it, give it some credit there. So our next product is gonna be the six hour bowl. Now the six hour bowl obviously is a bowl that claims to keep food uh, hot or cold for up to six hours. Now, okay. it's literally just a bowl. It says it's a double wall uh, insulated steel bowl. It honestly kind of reminds me like the uh, the double wall insulation. It kind of reminds me of like a like a Yeti cup or any of those like insulated uh, thermoses or whatever. So it's got a locking lid. Okay. I feel like six hours is kind of a bold claim. Now I know a lot of those like thermoses and stuff work really good. Um, I guess we'll see if it actually keeps food hot for six hours. I'm honestly kind of excited about it because I've been looking for an excuse to make a batch of my homemade macaroni and cheese. So I'm gonna whip up a batch of that. We'll throw it in here and uh, We'll see how long it stays hot. All right, so I'm done with my homemade macaroni and cheese. That took way longer than expected. I've never, I've never made such a big batch. It just took way longer than I expected. So let's dump all this in here. This is a, a family recipe. It's actually been in my family for generations. Have to make your, have to make the noodles yourself. I'll leave a link to like the recipe or something in the comments if you're interested. This one looks a little, a little moist. As Grandma always said, just mix it all up and nobody will know. Flatten that out right there. That actually worked out to be about the perfect amount. 
Tastes good, just like grandma used to make. Let's see what temperature we are starting off with. Uh, about 140 degrees, give or take. 140, 143. We'll call it, we'll call it 140. There we go. <laughs> Lock the lid down. We'll come back in six hours. And we'll see where we're at. All right, it's been six hours. Let's see what we're dealing with here. Let's see if there's any steam. <laughs> no. There's a, <laughs> there's a lot of condensation though. There's a little bit of warmth I can feel. Let's get our temperature probe in here. Okay. Down at the bottom, we're at 95. So we only lost like 40 degrees over six hours. I mean, that's not bad. Get in here for a taste test. Down here at the, at the bottom. Ninety-five degree macaroni and cheese is <laughs> not does not even feel warm hardly. Yeah, that just feels like room temperature. I guess forty degrees <laughs> is pretty significant when it comes to food. See, my problem here is that when you look at the box, it says keeps food hot, hot. It doesn't say that it keeps food lukewarm. It says it keeps it hot. I mean, it doesn't do what it says it does. Now, if they said it's gonna keep it warm for four hours. Okay, it probably does that. But keeping it hot for six hours? No, it does not. And I think, I think a lot of it has to do with this lid because like, yes, the lid, like, yes, the lid does lock down, but like there's still a lot of movement and it doesn't really seal all that well. And then on top of that, maybe the material just isn't insulated as well as it as well as it should be so as far as the six hour bowl i mean would it be better than a regular bowl like if you were gonna like take a dish to somebody's house or something and it was only gonna be in in here for maybe like a couple hours would it be better than not having something insulated no um i mean yes having food in here would be better than having it in something that's not insulated but as far as like if you want to keep something hot for six hours is this gonna work no, it, by, the, by the time you hit six hours, it's just gonna be lukewarm. All right, our last item is the Thaw Max Rapid Defrosting Tray. Now, it doesn't say this on the box anywhere that I can find, but on Amazon, the Amazon listing said that this tray could defrost your food up to twice as fast as just leaving it on the counter. That seems kind of suspicious to me because this literally just looks like a tray so what is going to make this different from like putting it on the counter or putting it on a cutting board or something it just seems kind of suspicious and also for some reason it says the quickest and safest way to defrost your food naturally how is this the safest way is like is like putting a steak on the counter like somehow incredibly dangerous but then like if you put it this on the counter and then you put that on top of it now all of a sudden it's really safe but the other way incredibly dangerous that just doesn't it doesn't make any sense like why would it be safer to put it on this oh actually i just realized i'm a complete idiot it actually says right here cuts defrosting time in half i don't i literally just looked at this two minutes ago and i didn't see that so yeah it actually says right there cuts the defrosting time in half it says here we're just supposed to remove the packaging from frozen meats place frozen meat directly on the tray and I guess it's supposed to thaw it out twice as fast. We will see. And it literally just is a metal tray. I don't know how a metal tray with like silicone feet, how is this supposed to do anything? The only thing that I can figure is that maybe where it's like metal, and it's like raised up off the table. Maybe it's gonna help like, I don't know, like dissipate the, pull away the coolness out of the meat and defrost it faster maybe or something. I don't really know. So we got the tray there and we're just gonna use just a regular old cutting board as our control. And we are going to use two steaks, which are obviously frozen. We'll put let's put this steak on this one. Come on. Alright, so 
So we'll put that there. Right, we'll put that one there. So I'm gonna come back in like three hours, maybe. I mean, according to this, this thing should be fully, if this thing, this one should still be frozen while this one should be, you know, pretty much completely thawed out. I guess we'll see how it goes. All right, so it has been three hours that these steaks have been sitting here. And uh, honestly, there's something going on on this side because if you look at this steak, I mean, it's pretty much completely thawed out. Like in the center, like here, I can still feel that it's a little bit frozen, but other than that, this thing is completely thawed out. Whereas over here, completely, well, not solid as a rock, but still like very, very, very frozen. That's crazy. Like that is, I don't know for sure that that is, uh, you know, exactly tw uh, twice as fast, but I'm impressed. I don't know what's going on. I would say, like I said earlier, maybe there's just something about the metal that like, I don't know, dissipate all the frozenness away from it or whatever. That's such a big difference. That's cr it's like, that's night and day. That's not like, this is just a little bit uh, more thought out. It's completely done basically versus almost still completely frozen. I guess a, a thawing tray does do something, and I guess it, it really does what it says it does. That is, uh, that cr that's crazy. That blows my mind. All right, so I'm going to, I'm going to go get this on the grill and cook this up for dinner. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you in the next one.